Welcome to What is Going Om for new thought from the edge of Om. Each week on Om Time's flagship radio show, veteran broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgebeer conducts thought provoking interviews with inspirational authors, artists, musicians, scientists, speakers, and filmmakers who are working at the point where spirituality and science meet consciousness at the very edge of Om. Here is your host, Sandy Sedgebeer. Hello. Every now and then we read a book that is so profoundly different to anything we've ever read before that it changes the entire trajectory of our life. Such an experience happened to tonight's guest, Colm Holland, back in 1993 when he was a member of the HarperCollins team which published a book that became one of the biggest international bestsellers of all time. That book was The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Colm Holland joins me now to share his story about how The Alchemist came to be published and the impact the magic he found within its pages had on Colm's life and career, taking him from publishing to teaching the art of spiritual alchemy in business and relationships and ultimately writing his own book about alchemy called The Secret of the Alchemist. Colm Holland, welcome. Sandy, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So, Colm, in your job as a publisher with HarperCollins, you obviously had to read an awful lot of books, hoping yeah. to make it into the mind-body-spirit arena. And as anyone yes. in publishing knows, the percentage that actually make it to market is small. The number of those that make it to the bestseller list is tiny. So to have one that sells over 85 million copies in 70 languages, and all because of you, that's, you know, that's got to be a pretty remarkable feat, and one that one would expect your bosses would just want to, you know, promote you to top spot straight away. But that's only part of the story, and that's not entirely what happened, is it? No. Yes, uh, uh, you put me into a sort of hypnotic dream state as you were talking. Then Sunday, it was like, oh yeah, that would have been nice. That would have been, that would have been good if it didn't happen. Happened like that. No, no, it didn't quite happen as as you described. But I but I can tell the story if you wish. Yes, please do. So I I, I was living in Sydney, Australia. Uh, I worked within HarperCollins there, and my role was quite simply to assess the books that were being published by the rest of the company around the globe and decide how many copies that we would need for the bookshops in Australia. And don't forget, this is pre-internet. So yes. you couldn't buy a book on the internet. It just wasn't possible back then. Uh, if you wanted to buy a book, you had to go into a bookshop. So the numbers of books that you know sort of the quantity of a single title was usually pretty low and so one Friday afternoon I remember it vividly the the post guy brought it because it was before the days of um, uh, internet so the manuscripts came physically from San Francisco and it arrived on my desk on a Friday afternoon and he literally threw it on my desk and said good luck with this lot as he, and as he walked out, I thought, yes, yes, I'm going to have to probably do this on Monday. But I just sort of sifted through the manuscripts and then suddenly it literally jumped out at me was the cover, which we now know to be the cover of the original The Alchemist by Paolo Kahlo. It doesn't look like the orange and red one that most of us see today. It was actually purple. It had a, a shepherd boy uh, and it had a, an Arabian dress figure that across his forehead was the all-seeing eye of God. And I don't know, it was just one of those moments when you should never judge a book by its cover. And I did. And I said, OK, this is something that I'm going to take home. And I made it, had a golden rule. Don't take work home at the weekend. That was for family time. But I just thought, no, 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 I'll take it home. You know, I never, you never know. I might get a minute. So Sunday afternoon, uh, there was a quiet moment in the house. 
I grabbed my deck chair and went out into my backyard in Sydney. It was a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Sat under the shade of the old gum tree um, and began to sort of just start to leaf through this this book that wasn't a self-help book. It's a fable. For those of you that have not read The Alchemist by Paolo Cale, it's a story. It's a story of a shepherd boy, which is why he's on the cover. And I started to leaf through it. It was about the boy leaving his home in Spain and going off on this adventure. And I knew instantly that this was a, this was a really poignant and meaningful metaphor for something much deeper, of course. Um, it's the hero's journey. It's the psychological pilgrimage, if you like, that we take when we commit to a life of personal transformation. And so I was gripped and I, the, the sun, as I say in my book, the sun literally set on the last page as I turned the manuscript. The only mistake I made was I never kept that paper manuscript. I, to this day, I can't remember what I did with it. It would be worth a fortune now. I'm sure it would. But never mind, it's, that's the way it was. The one thing I did take away from that reading that afternoon was this deep sense. I just had a knowing, and I'd seen a lot of books like Course in Miracles by Marianne Williamson. We published all of um, uh, Wayne, Dwayne Dyer's books, Wayne Dyer's books. So, you know, I was used to publishing the, the, great, the great and the glorious in this field. Um, some amazing gurus, but nobody had ever heard of this guy, Paolo Kahlo. Who Who is he? But I just sensed that we were sitting on probably one of the best-selling books that we were ever going to publish at HarperCollins. And the rest is history. Um, it is the best-selling book that HarperCollins has ever published. Um, oh, hang on. It, you missed a piece out. You, which you were the guy that decided how many copies should be. <laughs> You've got to put that bit into the story because it's okay, important. Yes. Oh, it's just me being my humble self, Sandy, <laughs> not, <laughs> not wanting to blow my ego trumpet. But okay, if you insist. Blow it, blow uh, it. Okay. <laughs> so on the Monday morning, quite um, unannounced, I called my colleague in San Francisco and I said, look, Greg, um, this is going to be... Uh, a mega bestseller. He said, oh, really? How many copies do you want for Australia? And normally, a book like that, I might order 2,000 in hardcover. That would be huge for a book like that. And I said, I want 200,000 in paperback straight away. And he spat out his coffee. I nearly, nearly killed him. He nearly choked on his, on his breakfast coffee. And um, and he said, oh, well, let me, let me confer with everybody and I'll come back to it. And about a week later, he came back and said, Ooh, okay, so a lot of people agree with you and so on and so on. And then eventually, uh, Paolo, we invited Paolo to come to the Adelaide Writers Festival, which was his first English-speaking um, event because he's made his first language, of course, is Portuguese. Um, in, he was struggling quite a bit with his English, and he was quite nervous um, a, about that session. Uh, but it went brilliantly. The queue of people to... Uh, to get him to sign a copy of the book, went outside the building around the block. And we'd never seen anything like this before. In fact, the book eventually made the Guinness Book of Records for the most copies ever sold of a single title by a living author. So um, he came to Sydney on his way home and said to me and my uh, director of publicity, look, I'd like to thank you guys for the faith, but also the effort that you put into promoting me. And uh, this was before it had sold millions, of course. And he looked at my colleague and, and uh, she was wonderful. And he said, look, I, I asked God and my wife, Christina, who was there, what I should give you. And he handed her this dress diamond ring um, and said, this is for, for taking such great care of us, which she, she had. She was amazing. And then he looked at me and he said, oh, Colin, um, this, I've asked God what I should give you, and my immediate thought was, oh, maybe a gold Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm admitting to the shallowness of my soul at this point, I'm ashamed. But it was actually a symbolic thought, and I'll come back to that in a moment. And um, he said, God told me to spend a day of my time doing my alchemy magic just for you. And I thought, 
Yeah, and did did the is the alchemy magic going to produce a gold Rolex? And of course, that wasn't the point. And then he went on to say, the reason I did the alchemy magic is so that I've worked with the universe that whatever you want will come to pass. You just need to decide what you want. And then he left, and I've not spoken to him since. And that's where this story of my book. The secret of the alchemist begins because from that moment onwards, despite my skepticism, despite my sort of doubting Thomas reception of, of the gift that he'd given me, my life was transformed. Yes. Not instantly, yes. but gradually and progressively to the point where I sit here now talking to you, Sandy, I cannot even remember being able to think like I, I I used to think and behave before that night with Paolo. So that was the beginning of a very long and inquisitive journey that I decided to take to study what happened when he did that alchemy work and what how could I harness the power of that and then how can I help other people harness the power of that in their lives. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that book really was a, a dominant force, wasn't it? I mean, you <laughs> found your true calling because of that book. Indeed, yes. And and that's what I think most people take away from it. I mean, I've, I've spoken to hundreds and hundreds of people who have read The Alchemist, and I'm sure there's plenty of listeners um, listening right now who have, have read it and would attest to the fact that it is a book that, undoubtedly encourages you to to rediscover your dream your ambitions your aspirations and to believe again that you can achieve whatever you want to achieve and um, rekindle that desire to live a, a, a bigger life than, than we would normally and that that's the main theme obviously of the journey of Santiago. But then what I discovered was that the, that's just one layer of meaning and, and purpose of the story. There are at least two or three other quote unquote secret meanings going on and that anybody who's prepared like I did in a way to devote the time to really reading into and understanding what the, the story of the alchemist is really about um, will never never look back because it's more than, than just a fable, that's for sure. Well, I will share with our listeners what I said to you just before we came on air, that, you know, okay. I, read, I read God knows how many books. And quite <laughs> frankly, these days I don't read many books with the word secret in the title. Um, and... If I do, I usually have an expectation that isn't very high. And that's really how, you know, my brain was moving in that direction when I read your book. But this, this book blew me away because you really did do your homework. You really, I mean, you went off, you researched Jung, you've done more research, I think, than, you know, most people would just to find the answer to something. And... Um, what you you share is absolutely very, very powerful. You know, a lot of people say that The Secret, yes, it was very, very successful, but it really doesn't go far enough. It's a little bit trite. It gives you a little bit of a surface um, idea mm. of how to manifest. And people, look, some people do it and get results, and a lot of people don't and get very upset. What you mm. have done is you've really looked at alchemy, and you've looked at the secret that really was shared in The Alchemist. And it is very deep and it is very profound and it is very powerful. So tell us what Thank the you. secret is. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about Carl Jung, if I may, because the secret kind of, kind of sits in what he discovered when he was um, studying human psychology and the workings of the psyche and the intellect and the conscious and the unconscious. The secret really is this. The secret of the fable of the alchemist is that it is all about 
the journey, the process of what Carl Jung called individuation. Individuation, for those of you who have never heard that term before, was Carl Jung's word for entering into a fullness of humanity. In other words, living out the full potential of our human existence as, in, as an individual. It means being free from all of the obstacles, the, the, the uh, boundaries, the uh, elements within our own psyche that would hold us back and prevent us from, from living a full and joyful life. And that can be you know, depths of negativity, depths of depression, depths of trauma, de you know, everything that we would rather hide and uh, bury and push down within our unconscious and our memories, the memories we don't want to recall. And what Carl Jung discovered, and this is the basis of, of his analytical psychology, is that the more we push those down and we do it naturally, the more they become our shadow self. So the, the fable of the alchemist is the, uh, is the fable of a, of a young shepherd boy who, who is our adult or a young self who goes on through into a desert experience, faces his worst fears, faces his deepest doubts, faces the, the negativity of his own heart. You're listening to What Is Going On. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer and my guest today is writer, mentor, speaker, alchemy trainer, adventurer and former publishing professional Colm Holland. We'll be back with more from Colm after the break. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free AscendingHearts.com Vox Novus, the new voice. Vox Novus, the new dimension. Vox Novus, thought and movement leaders who will share from their experience and offer tools to help us navigate our rapidly changing world. My name is Victor Furman. Join me every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio for Vox Novus, the new voice. Mental health. Most people think it means mental illness. Most people are wrong. Mental health doesn't apply to just some of us. Like physical and emotional health, it applies to all of us. We're all susceptible to anxiety and depression, the human conditions. But for some of us, it doesn't stop there. Cracked, the podcast, strips away the shame, embarrassment, fear and stigma by expanding the mental health conversation into areas less visited. From brain and body chemistry, food, nutrition, trauma and the microbiome, to pharmaceutical drugs, psychedelics, meditation, visionary experiences and spiritual awakenings. Cracked, the podcast, explores them all, including the notion that for many, breakdown can be the beginning of breakthrough. For as singer-songwriter Leonard Cohen wrote, there is a crack in everything. It's where the light gets in. Cracked, the podcast, Slaying the Dragons of Mental Health. Join the conversation with me, Sandy Sedgbeer, and my co-host, Rebecca Shaper, on the first and third Thursday of every month at 12 noon Eastern Time. These are the sounds of a dinner. A dinner that almost didn't happen. A dinner now served, thanks to people like you. Due to COVID-19, 17 million more Americans may face hunger. Feeding America is helping our neighbors in need. And if you're able, you can too. Donations are being accepted at feedingamerica.org slash coronavirus. 
Brought to you by the Ad Council and Feeding America. 200 Food Bank Strong. Welcome back. Colin Holland, so sorry that we lost you just before the break and you didn't have a chance to finish what you were saying. But what you were talking about is what you call true empowerment, correct? Yes, true, true empowerment, which means living life to the full without all the, the hindrances that quite often just lurk around in the unconscious and literally hold us back tie us down and stop us moving forward. So true empowerment means the ability in the end of the day, this is my interpretation of it, the ability to love unconditionally. And what I discovered, you know, what is the secret of the alchemist? The secret of the alchemist I discovered is just that is the ability to be, to allow yourself to be embraced by unconditional love so that you in turn can love others. That, that's a summary. Well, you know, that's an interesting thing. At the beginning of your book, um, you have a quote. The greatest challenge we face is to truly believe at the very core of our heart that we are loved unconditionally for who we are and not for what we could do. And then in your author's note, you write that your use of the word love in The Secret of the Alchemist carries a very specific meaning. Um, and you say, for that reason, you give it a capital L throughout. You're referring <laughs> to unconditional love, but you talk about love almost like some people talk about the universe. You know, um, I'm going to talk to the universe and it's going to give me what I need or it's going to show me what to do. And instead of the universe, you use the word love. Yes, um, there's a really good reason for that. And that is that in my experience, and this was just born out of years of experience, is that when you talk about the universe or God or spirit um, or presence or, or whatever, what I realized is that it has a character. It, it has a nature to it. It's not a, it's not a being in my mind per se, but it has a nature and that nature is unconditional love, which means that, it, that this love doesn't judge us. It accepts us just as we are. And if we are accepted just as we are, it doesn't mean we have to prove anything to be the recipients of that love. That, for me, was the most ground-moving uh, emotion that I've ever experienced in my life, and to the point where I actually did invite unconditional love in, into my own being and then asked that unconditional love to heal, to empower, and to drive me forward. It was the shock actually, to discover when I was reading The Alchemist by Paolo Kahlo, towards the end of the fable, that Santiago, the shepherd boy, has exactly the same experience that I had um, when I was 18 years old. And here I am at the age of 40, reading somebody else telling me exactly the same experience that I had. That was the moment, probably, Sandy, when I, that Sunday afternoon when I was reading the manuscript that I made the decision that this was going to touch millions and millions of people. Because if it's really a fable about the power of unconditional love, then nothing could stop it. And in, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say, isn't it an interesting that something as simple as unconditional <laughs> love can touch every single person's heart? And yet, when you look at the world we're living in, mm. we are so far apart from that. Yes, we are. And there's lots of people who have written many books on the subject of why, why that's the case. Um, but I actually think it is really quite simple, is that I do believe that most of us, not all, but most of us at birth have the, have the knowledge and the understanding that we are loved and that we deserve love and that we don't have to actually do anything to to try and attain that love. And, and most of us, um, even if it's only for a short while, in some cases a few minutes for some people, that is a real and tangible experience. And that lives right at the core of what it means to be human. In other words, that spark, that grain of unconditional love 
is deep within every soul. It's deep within the human spirit. It is what Carl Jung um, called the self, the true self. And it doesn't really matter how small that spark is, it can be rekindled. It, every one of us can enable that spark to, to burst into flame again and to transform our lives. And that's why I love the, the original book by, by Paolo Kelly, The Alchemist, because that is exactly what, what the theme of that book is all about. And towards the end of the story, when, he's, when the Santiago is talking to the wind and the sun uh, and the desert about what love is and the power of love, the one thing that he identifies and discovers is that all the power of the universe lives within his own heart. So the soul or the person who is at one with the power of the universe, which is unconditional love, can actually perform miracles. That is the amazing thing about true empowerment. We can change the world around us. Now, certainly, let's, let's face it, there are millions of people who who know this around the globe and we live in the age of Aquarius uh, I'm, I'm constantly being told and probably more than any other time in human history there are more people like you and me and, and many of your listeners who are now deciding to refocus on this very fact of human existence and I actually find this despite everything that's gone on in the last year, 2020, and is already beginning to happen this year, despite all of that negativity, there is amazing um, positivity beginning to rise up. But, but it's, it's coming from the heart of individuals. And, I, and I, I take great encouragement in that. I actually think we're living in momentous times. And I think what we see going on in the world around us is almost a reaction to this incredible positivity, this realignment with love that's beginning to happen within the human race. Well, it's so necessary because, as you said, it's fundamental to all of us. I mean, what yeah. I found particularly um, impressive in your book is, um, you know, when you started talking about Jung, and I didn't know... Um, that he spent the last 30 years of his life studying and practicing the art of alchemy. But when yes. we, you know, I don't wish to diss the secret, but when uh, when we compare a book like yours and the, the amount of research in there and the um, the power of what you share, it really does put the other one you know, in the shade, as far as I'm concerned, it eclipses it. It is giving us, it is giving us the tools, which I don't think the secret fully did. But, you know, the caveat is we've got to work for it. You know, mm. we've got to do that inner work. This is, this is our alchemy. This is, you know, transformation. We have to transform from within. We have to come back and, you know, remove everything that was obscuring the love that we are. Yes, I couldn't have put it better, Sandy. You've, you've really encapsulated my, you know, the essence of what I've written in my book. Um, I, I wouldn't knock any, anybody else's view on this, but I would say this, that, that in my experience, most people, even the most earnest people who are looking to personally transform, at some point hit a major block. And Carl Jung, of course, devoted himself to trying to free people and, and assist people, facilitate them to be able to, to move on them from there. So if, if there are any listeners who, who want to read my book and find out what I say about Carl Jung and his, and his process, um, what you'll discover is that he, he was only really reiterating what the ancient alchemists going back 5,000 years had already discovered, but just didn't have the scientific language to explain it. What the privilege that Carl Jung had is that he, he had enough scientific background to be able to say, well, look, you know, in the psyche, there's sort of two compartments, if you like. There's the conscious mind and the unconscious. And 
the, the, the traumas of our life are all buried in the unconscious. The, the trick, really, for, for anyone, any budding alchemist and anybody who, who studies Carl Jung, is to not continue to loathe the self that lives within the unconscious. So don't, don't keep thinking of, you know, oh, I'm, I'm terrible at this, or I think these terrible thoughts, or, or I, hate, I hate that about myself, and, oh, I, you know, I really don't want to re- relive that childhood where I suffered this or that, or how I was abused, and so on. What Carl Jung would say is, and what the alchemists would say, and what I say in my book, is that we need to find the courage, and love will give us the courage, to visit that part of our soul, our psyche, and embrace it, accept it, um, enfold it in acceptance. And that's why I constantly you know, bang on about unconditional love, because in my life, where I needed to do that, and I give the examples, uh, my wife said, gosh, you've made yourself so vulnerable in this book, are you sure you really want to publish this? And I say, yeah, absolutely. Because people need to know that they're not alone in their vulnerability. You know, I've been there. Thousands of us have been there. And this is a road less trodden. It's true. But if those of us that are brave enough to go into the unconscious and face the parts that we would otherwise despise and don't value at all, if we're prepared to go with unconditional love and revisit them and allow love to heal them, then they become our greatest treasure. Yeah. Our vulnerability, when we feel that our weakest point, that sort of the, the leaden part of ourselves that, that weighs us down, is actually the gold that is going to deliver our wealth of, of fullness and of joy and well-being. This, this is where the treasure actually lives. So it's a paradox. And alchemy is all about paradox. Alchemy is the secret of the alchemist. Um, alchemy is all about what Carl Jung taught. And um, so that's why I actually gave, gave my book the title, The Secret of the Alchemist, because in the end of the day, it is an ancient wisdom that is still delivering treasure today. Mm. Well, you outline three stages of transformation based on ancient alchemical principles, which you label... Yeah black, white and red phases. Now, I do want to talk about those because that's an absolutely fascinating part of the book. Um, Mm. But before we get there, um, I wanted to ask you, um, have you sent a copy of your book to Paolo? Um, Yes. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Paolo has, um, when when he, um, when I first published the book, um, one of my PR agents um, sent it to the Daily Mail in, in the UK, which is one of the world's largest online newspapers. And they, they did a three-page article on the book, and Paolo saw it the same evening that it was published by the Daily Mail, and he gave it a big shout-out on, um, on his Facebook and Twitter pages. So, so yes, I've, I've got a big thumbs up from Paolo. <laughs> Well, um, good, but what what I really want to know is, did he say to you, yes, yes, you got it absolutely right. That was the message in the book. Um, I mean, and do you think that that was when he was writing that book, he was consciously, you know, getting giving us that message that, you know, because lots of people have read the book and I don't think they've taken everything from it that you have taken from it. Um. I would love to say yes, but the one thing that anybody who knows anything about Paolo is that he is a mysterious person, and um, the chances of him saying what you you would you and I would like him to say are pretty pretty <laughs> slim in my experience. I've met even met people that have interviewed him, and and I you know love him to death, but um, he is a bit of an enigma when it comes to even talking about the meaning of the alchemist, whether he consciously. I mean, he told me he wrote it in two weeks, but it was years and years of experience and uh, his own knowledge of of his own psyche that that led him to write. So those are the only clues I had. 
But I actually think it's good in a way that it's that the alchemist, the book itself, has a mystical element to it. And and I want to talk a little bit, Sandy, you know, before we finish today, I do want to talk about the mystery of alchemy and how how difficult it is to grasp in some ways. So, uh, uh, but I can talk a little bit more about it. Do, do you want me well, to just run just, through the three stages before we let's we get do that lost. when we when we come back from the break, Colin? Um, yep. You know, I didn't want to interrupt you in the middle of that, so let's just move <laughs> that to the other side of the break. Okay, you're listening to what is going on. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and I'm speaking with Colin Holland about how the magic he found in Paolo Coelho's runaway bestseller, The Alchemist, took him from publishing to ultimately writing his own book, The Secret of the Alchemist. We'll be back with more after the break. The cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Time's flagship radio show, What Is Going On? As a long-time editor, book judge, spiritual magazine publisher and radio host, I've read thousands of books and interviewed hundreds of authors and teachers. So I know what's worth reading and what isn't. Now, with the spiritual book market growing increasingly crowded, more and more people are seeking my help in finding the authentic voices, the empowering tools and the genuine skip the BS guidance that will make the most difference to their spiritual development. So I decided to make it easier by bringing my knowledge, experience and considerable network of contacts together in the No BS Spiritual Book Club. There are no ads, no joining fees, no obligations and no BS. Just an ever-growing library compiled by recognisable and respected names of the 10 best books that help them the most on their journeys. Plus free book excerpts, audios and live video interviews where you can quiz them about their spiritual journeys and their 10 best list choices. Your time and money are valuable. Your spiritual journey even more so. If you're looking for genuine guidance from people who have walked this path before you, check out sedgebeer.com. Click on the No BS Spiritual Book Club tab and join the club. That's sedgebeer.com, S-E-D-G-B-E-E-R.com. I'll see you there. I am Fidel Mshombo. I was born in a city called Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom! Everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back. Colm Holland, let's hear about those three stages of transformation. Yes, so what we were talking about is the, in a way, we're talking about the symbolism of alchemy and how it relates to the journey of personal transformation. So there are there's some really common alchemy symbols that most people are familiar with. For example, uh, alchemists can turn lead into gold. That's, that's one of the big ones. Uh, thanks to Harry Potter, we've all heard of the Philosopher's Stone, um, the Philosopher's Stone was the 
the aim of the, the alchemists, that's what they wanted to produce because it was believed that if you owned the Philosopher's Stone, which you had to create yourself, you could just a sliver of it would um, turn lead into gold and it would be the elixir of life. It could heal any disease and so on. So these are all symbols. Um, and Carl Jung discovered that the symbology of alchemy um, matched his understanding of what was needed for us as humans to enter into full empowerment uh, and maturation uh, that, that he discovered. So there are three phases in what the alchemists call the great work, and that is the great work of transformation. So we're not really talking about turning solid lead into, into gold. What we're talking about is turning the despised, broken, uh, unwanted parts of the self into the most valuable and the greatest treasured parts of, of our psyche. And the, the three phases are quite simple. There's the black, the white, and the red phase. The, some, some of you who, who know a lot about alchemy will say, well, actually, there's a couple more phases in there as well. But uh, for the sake of simplicity, those are the three key phases. The black phase um, re represents um, really the stage of combustion. It's the, it's the breaking down the destruction of what already exists. So um, if, you're, if you're a student or you've read anything about um, uh, Freud or Jung, you'll know that the ego um, is, represents the, the, the construct um, of the, the false self. It's the, it's the mask, if you like, that we wear and it's got, um, <clears throat> and it's got ego attached to it. It's, um, it wants to be the center of attention. Um, it, it wants rewarding the whole time. And, and one of the first things that we need to do in that, as, as all of you will know that have tried any form of personal transformation, is that that's got to be destroyed. And the alchemists deliberately went into a stage of spiritual destruction. So they deliberately invited their psyche to be broken down into its base elements. So that's the black phase. Some people have been through it, and often it's called the dark night of, of the soul, named after the, the, the Catholic mystic, St. John of the Cross, um, famous saint who wrote a poem that was nick, sort of nicknamed the, the dark night of the soul, where he, he said, the only way to find God is to lose God. The only way to find light is to go into the darkness, and that also comes from a basic alchemy teaching. So inviting the soul and actively uh, allowing all of that we, we normally regard as dear and to hang on to all of the, the props in our life, allowing those to be kicked away so that we actually reach rock bottom, literally, um, can be something we could choose to do. And in my book, one of the things I stress is that we could choose to do that in what the alchemists called the dry way, which meant that it's a deliberate choice. And why would you deliberately choose to go into the darkest parts of your own psyche? Well, the thing is that, as you, as you know, Sandy, this is where the dragons live. Yeah. to use another alch alchemical symbol. The, these, are the, these are the angry, dangerous, destructive parts of, of our own emotional existence. And they have this really nasty habit of, of breaking out of our unconscious into our everyday life at the most inconvenient times. So and moments of stress or grief or conflict, or um, you know, whatever a, a trigger happens to be, you know, this is when these emotions can just break out and cause havoc in our life and be destructive. And that was the reason I chose to do the black phase and to deliberately go into the dark night of the soul, because I would just find myself getting angry about absolutely nothing. I could not fathom why suddenly my you know i saw red and why my my emotions would just boil over 
at such a trivial thing. And I was in my mid twenties at the time. So that was when I went into the black phase. And what I discovered when I went into my black phase is that there was this really young child. There was an inner child who was extremely hurt. And because he was in such pain, he was extremely angry. And that's my, that was what I discovered when I went into the, into the black phase. So it doesn't end there. And those of you who have, have done some inner child work will agree with me that the next phase, which is the white phase of alchemy, is all about healing. So once we've found whatever it is that we need to embrace and stop despising about ourselves, then as we bring that into the light, and quite often we need to get help, by the way, Sandy, as I'm sure you've talked with many or many of your speakers and authors over the years on this, that you know, if we're prepared to swallow our ego and ask for help, there's plenty of help. And, and love will bring the help that's needed at the right moment, in my experience. I've seen time and time again synchronicity of people who are following the, the great work, who are following the way of personal transformation. It's almost as if the universe is just waiting for us to reach the point, And then the moment we're ready, it sends the help that we need. So asking for help, getting help, where we need other people's assistance to help us embrace the parts that we otherwise would normally reject is, is really key. And that, so that's the white phase. And then once we allow that healing to take place, we are able to move into the red phase. And the red phase is all about taking the power of the new purified self and allowing it to, to have a purpose and to move into action. So the red is the breaking down, the white is the purification, and the red is all about action because once we discovered the real treasure, which is our inner self that we otherwise despise, we, the idea is not just to sit on it, the idea is to turn that into action for the benefit of others, for our own well-being, but particularly to be able to perform magic, what I call magic and miracles, within the world around us. We can be magical agents for change in the world in which we live, um, whether that's our immediate family, our friends, where we work, our society, uh, whatever whatever the expression of the treasure that we hold um, wants to manifest. So that that's the great work and the three phases. Well, when you describe your own experiences in those three phases, I mean, it really mm. does bring it home to us and we can all find incidents that are not dissimilar that we can relate to. Um, I mean, it truly is a very, very interesting process, but ultimately it brings you back to love and it brings you back to loving yourself um, unconditionally and then we can love others unconditionally I mean we think about it the alchemist was published in 1993 the world was a different place your book mm. the secret of the alchemist was published in the end towards the end of 2020 a year of you know complete mm. global turbulence and turmoil do you see something synchronistic in the timing of your book because it does offer a much needed message about our connection to the magical force that can change our lives. Yes. Do you know, I'm, I actually tell this a bit of the story of how I came to write the book. So I started writing the book, where are we now, 2021. Um, it would have been four, just over four years ago when I, when I actually began to write. And um, just stuff began to fall across my path. It was... Um, I went with my grandson to, to a bookshop and we were buying some children's books for him. I was helping him choose. He was three years old at the time and we were choosing some books. And I, I just, I don't know why, <laughs> but I said to the bookseller, you haven't got a copy of The Alchemist by Paolo Kayla. So I always, I'm always interested to see whether it's still popular in bookshops you know, after all these years, nearly 30 years. And she said, oh, that's funny. Somebody brought a second-hand copy in just this morning. I said, really? She said, yes. And she, she gave it me. And she said, do you want it? And I flipped it open. 
and inside it says, and I've, I've got it here in front of me, um, it says we are all alchemists when we try to find the formula for our lives. And I thought, I know the formula. <laughs> I've got a formula and I'm sitting on it. Yeah. And I mentioned it to a couple of people and um, a friend of mine actually who, who I used to be in publishing with years and years ago discovered the, the story of me and Paolo. And he challenged me outright and said, Colin, you can't sit on this. I said, why not? He said, because you've discovered magic. You had a magic experience with Paolo and you've discovered magic. He said, the world needs this. And I said, really? <laughs> he said, yes, you must write this book. So I did, and that, that's okay. So I did it in faith that it was needed, little knowing what was going to transpire in 2020. Mm, yeah, well, it's certainly a very timely publication. I'll, I'll say that. Um, I want to ask you too, you, you know, you talk about omens and synchronicities and young, um, and do you not see this kind of circular set of synchronicities around you and Paolo. I mean, his book changed your life. Um, you know, I said at the beginning of the show that it is rare that, you know, we come across a book or an experience that changes the trajectory of our life. Now, you've written a book which I really do believe can change the tra trajectory of other people's lives. So it's almost like he comes along, he hands you something <laughs> that changes your life, and then you turn, turn that around and do the same for others. I think that is the work of love, and I think that is the purpose of life. And I would love everybody listening to this to find that magic for themselves in their life. And that was partly the reason I, I wrote the book. I'm actually going to I'm going to talk about something, if I may, Senator, that I don't often discuss in public, but it is in my book, so... You know, it's, it's not like We've I literally have only got two minutes, Colm. Two minutes is, is all we have. So, yeah, if you can do it really quickly. I will. At the end of my book, I give a formula for how just using your own inner alchemy, you can physically manifest magic in your everyday life. The kind of magic that, that Sandy and I are talking about today, the kind of magic that Powell and I have experienced between us. This doesn't need to just be unique to, to people like me or me, people like Paolo. It can be the same experience for every human being, in my opinion. Mm. Now, you are um, launching an online school of alchemy transformation. Um, is that going to help people take them through this process and hold their hand? Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm offering to be the alchemist. Um, if you know the story, I'm offering to be the, the alchemist to, to give you that extra push, if you like, that extra leg up to be able to manifest magic in your life. Oh, so tell us a, just a little bit about that, how people can access it, find out more. Yes, it's launching later this month. This is January 2021. And it's uh, if you go to my website, columnholland.com, C-O-L-M, holland.com, um, keep your eye open for that and we will be announcing the course and how you can become a member. It's a lifetime membership, so once you, once you start, you become really a, a member of, a, of an exclusive, if you like, um, group of people who are all, all on the same journey together. Well, you know, I, I just love the, you know, it's, it's, it's so neat that here you were in publishing, helping someone else's book to become just such a, an incredible mega seller. And that very book is what, you know, puts you on a different trajectory. And now you are, you've moved from publishing and you are becoming the author <laughs> and the teacher. I mean, there's something rather beautiful in that. Yes. Yes, it is. And I feel immensely privileged. And I, I just want everybody else to experience the same depth of love and unconditional generosity that, that love has to offer all of us. Yeah, well, that's definitely magic in action, isn't it? Colm Holland, yes. thank you for being with us today. I thoroughly enjoyed your book. Sandy, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Well, that's The Secret of the Alchemist, a wonderful companion book to Paolo Coelho's best-selling The Alchemist. 
Um, and it is published by O Books. And for more information about Colm Holland and his work, you can visit his website, C O L M Holland dot com. And uh, yeah, check out this book. It, this this is a standout one. Take it from me. So, okay, that's it. For tonight, I'm Sandy Sedgby. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to being with you at the same time next week. Till then, it's goodbye from me. Mm-hmm.